Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about getting lef left behind. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, how quickly do you get left behind if you don't constantly update your skills? It depends a little bit on how you define getting left behind and sort of like how do you keep update your skills but let's just go with the extreme version let's say that you do no coding you don't do any reading like you're completely isolated from all the programming stuff then it's gonna take a few years uh, I would say left behind like well depending on if you want to be bleeding edge type of level uh, then you're gonna get left behind in a year or two if you don't do any like any reading or anything like that because that's usually the amount of time uh, the sort of time it takes for a new tool to tool to like enter the sphere of collective uh, um, adoption and get popularized because there's a difference there's a lot of tools flying around especially in javascript and front end land uh, but there's not it's not like just because something is new that everybody's like oh yeah this is the new big thing and this is where it's all about uh, it takes a little time for it to be established and then proven and then get like popularized because and usually it happens because the newsletters and the bloggers need more stuff to write about so that they can make more money uh, that's that's a side, side 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 prejudice that I have, but hey, I have a few of those as well. Even though you might not think that, think think that I have opinion. I'm a, I am an opinionated bastard on some stuff. I promise you that much. Anywho, uh, so on the other hand, if you do what I like to say, the healthy thing, depending on your level, which is to have a genuine curiosity for technology, you would be surprised at how long you can maintain a understanding of things without necessarily being a master of it. But th I think that that is the sweet spot, especially for people who go into higher management. So I have, like, uh, I, I, it was actually the other day, I I went on a, tri a business trip with my boss's boss, which is, this is a guy who, like, his entire thing is that he manages, a l we were talking hundreds of hundreds of people, and his entire his entire workday is going from meeting to meeting. That's all he does, basically. I mean, I mean, it's a difficult job, it's a very tough job, but that is his f f primary focus. And so the way that he manages to be actually a pretty good technical, uh, like, uh, class, like uh, uh, department lead, is because he has a genuine curiosity in technology. He has his own Udemy account and he takes courses uh, when he has the time and like he has like these he keeps track of sort of what's going on, what's this DevOps thing and what's machine learning like etc etc. He he used to be a software developer like a few years ago and he traded that in to be a higher manager type of character right but he still keeps in touch with the like the at least the high level theory behind certain concepts and what tools are still relevant and why one and takes these sort of it's almost like he's almost learning uh, the same sort of things as a junior software developer right? but with the intention of just keeping himself to sort of sort of up to date with things right and what's very powerful about that is that he has a foundation of very strong coding skills that he had like when he went really deep back in the day when he actually was a, a professional great software developer and now he can maintain a very deep a fairly good understanding of a lot of the concepts uh, by simply doing a much lighter work it's sort of if we go fitness again it's sort of like if you were if you train as a professional like an olympic athlete for most of your youth right well to keep yourself in a fairly decent shape later on in life, maybe not at the same level, of course, you don't have to work out as hard. You can just sort of, main, you because you establish that foundation early on, and then you can maintain it in a more readily fashion or at a lower cost by doing small stuff. And that is very similar to how how he has been doing things. And I was I actually complimented him, and I said the other day that it's very refreshing to talk to someone who is this high up in the organization because I mean shit. He, he literally has 
the authority over so 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 many people and he's responsible for so much stuff yet having a conversation with him he, he actually knows the words that you are saying as me who's like a low level grunt in comparison who is like just you know I talk about I, I do the actual coding where he's just basically directing budgets and allocating projects and stuff like that and so so I mean that's extremely valuable and I told them like for me to you have been able to have like a no like a, uh, because we it saves a lot of time and we sort of agreed on that the one of the biggest benefits with this apart from being able to manage if people um, who work in IT effectively is that it saves a lot of time for me as the software developer and the teams and so forth because a lot of these sort of alignment meetings and a lot of corporations and so forth do you have any idea how many meetings and how much time goes in for the software developers to teach everybody in that meeting what the hell they're actually doing it saves so much time when you have technical managers because when you don't have technical managers you have to teach them basically you have to make a PowerPoint presentation or a, like a, explain to them what the thing that everybody's salary is being paid with what that actually is which makes the whole thing so like take so much longer you might have to have several meetings just and like all this extra stuff just so that the other people in the room feel like they sort of understand what's going on because apparently unfortunately it's not a hard requirement for people who are at that level to actually know what they're doing I, c I don't understand why but that is the reality and so by doing the thing that he's been doing he's actually able to stay relevant for quite a lot of time and I think that the same thing can be applied to you and so as long as so so, so the idea be, be, being basically that if you have a good strong foundation maintaining relevancy and keeping yourself sort of up to date requires less effort for you uh, so, so you don't have to worry that you have to like be die-hard coding all the time, and then uh, unless you do exactly that thing, you're going to be completely, you know, it's going to be alien to you how IT works in a few years. It's really down down to just going from intensive, super focus on something to more dabbling, like uh, light exercising, if you want to use the fitness analogy, and that's usually good enough uh, for for most for most of your career actually. So what I want you to take away from this is that you don't really have to worry that you're going to get left behind uh, and lose your skills if you just keep sort of in touch. It's something that is worth knowing is, of course, if you do move away from super die-hard coding, it's going to be hard for you to move back into super die-hard coding, potentially, depending on, I mean, because of my, my manager as an example. He might be able to know how all the things work, but if he decided to know, you say, no, actually, what, I want, just want to go back to be a software developer, the effort for him to get back would still sort of be there he has a good foundation but he's gonna have to focus do the junior thing again right uh, it's probably gonna go faster for him than for someone who's learning it for the first time but it's not like he can just seamlessly transition from high level management back to software development and I have a personal friend who is a manager and he's sort of seeing the same thing where he's sort of like it's actually getting to the point where he's getting so far away from the coding that he's actually he's gaining value as a manager but he's at the cost of his value as a software developer and depending on how you want to strategize your career path and so forth that might be what you want it might not be what you want but at the very least we I can tell you that having a junior like a, like a, like a dabbling in things over time and not isolating you comp yourself completely and having that healthy cu curiosity makes you relevant for quite some time if you want to like uh, go to the extreme it's very good as a rule to say that you should never ever get to a point where you have no information coming in or like you spend no time whatsoever watching like tutorials on things or reading articles or stuff like that because if you isolate yourself completely and only do the management thing it doesn't take that long for you to start losing your relevancy depending on how relevant you actually want to be have a great day